Go ahead. Okay, Red Riding Hood. A long time ago, in a simple cottage beside the deep, dark woods, there lived a pretty child called Red Riding Hood. She was kind and considerate, and everyone loved her. One afternoon, Red Riding Hood's mother called to her. Granny is feeling up to snuff today, she said, so I've baked her favorite custard as a little surprise. Be a good girl and take it to her, will you? Red Riding Hood was delighted. She loved going to Granny's, even though it meant going through the dark woods. When the custard had cooled, Red Riding Hood's mother wrapped it up and put it in a basket. Now, whatever you do, she said, go straight to Granny's. Do not tarry. Do not speak to any strangers. Yes, Mama, said Red Riding Hood. Before long, she was in the deepest part of the woods. Oh, she said, this is scary. Suddenly, a large wolf appeared. Good afternoon, my dear, he said. Care to stop for a little chat? Oh, gracious me, said Red Riding Hood. Mama said not to speak to any strangers. But the wolf had such charming manners, and where are you going, sweet thing, he said. I'm on my way to visit Granny, who lives in the pretty yellow house on the other side of the woods, said Red Riding Hood. She's feeling poorly, and I'm taking her a surprise. You don't say, said the wolf. Just then he had a delightful idea. No reason why I can't eat them both, he thought. Allow me to escort you, he said. You never know what might be lurking about. You're too kind, said Red Riding Hood. Beyond the forest, they came to a patch of sunflowers. Why not pick a few, suggested the wolf. Grannies love flowers, you know. But while Red Riding Hood was picking a pretty banquet, the clever fox hurried on ahead to Granny's house. Who is it, called out Granny? It is I, your delicious, er, darling granddaughter, said the wolf in a high voice. The door's unlocked, said Granny. Surprise, cried the wolf. Granny was fierce at having her reading interrupted. Get out of here, you horrid thing, she cried. But the wolf gobbled her right up. He didn't even bother to chew. Tasty, he said, part patting his belly. So tasty. Just then he heard footsteps on the garden path. Here comes dessert. And losing no time, he put on Granny's cap and glasses, jumped in bed, and pulled up the cover. Who is it, he called out in his sweetest granny voice. It is I, your little granddaughter, said Red Riding Hood. The door's unlocked, said the wolf. Red Riding Hood was distressed at seeing her grandmother so changed. Why, granny, she said, what big eyes you have. They better to see you, my dear, said the wolf. And granny, what long arms you have. They better to hug you, my dear, said the wolf. And granny, what big teeth you have. They better to eat you, my dear, cried the wolf. And he gobbled her right up. I'm so wicked, he said, so wicked. But really he was enormously pleased with himself. And having enjoyed such a heavy meal, he was soon snoring away. A hunter passed by and was alarmed by the frightening racket. That doesn't sound like Granny, he said. And so the brave hunter jumped in the window, killed the sleeping wolf, and cut him open. Out jumped Granny and Red Riding Hood. We're ever so grateful, said Red Riding Hood. That wicked wolf won't trouble you again, said the hunter. It was so dark in there I couldn't even read a word, said Granny. Red Riding Hood promised never, ever to speak to another stranger. Charming manners are not. And she never did. Mm -hmm.